my name is Amy Butler. I work with Platt Realty here in Frisco, Texas, and today I want to talk with you about how to implement a pet policy in your rental property. The statistics show that 79% of all renters in America own a pet. So if you are choosing not to allow pets in your property, you are greatly reducing the amount of prospective tenants available to lease your home to. Um, so today I'm going to discuss four important guidelines to consider when implementing a pet policy for your rental property. Now let's first talk about proper information gathering. Now just like you would require an application on your tenants, uh, the same should be said for gathering information for any pets that would be at the property. Um, information that you should ask for would be um, what type of pet, whether it be a dog or a cat or a bird, um, what breed, what sex, the age of the pet, um, is the pet neutered or, or spayed, um, and also if it's a cat, is the cat declawed. These are all important details for you to be able to make a good decision about allowing that pet at your property. Uh, another thing that you should consider asking for is a picture of each pet, um, both a headshot and um, a sitting or standing uh, shot of each pet. This will allow you to attach that photograph to the file uh, to allow you to enforce your pet agreement um, as that being the pet that you approved for the property. It is also important to collect a pet deposit in addition to your general security deposit. Things to consider when determining the appropriate amount of pet deposit to collect would be uh, the potential damage that could occur to the property. The items that tend to be at, at higher risk would be um, your doors, uh, the door frames, trim, molding, and in the backyard, uh, the fence, uh, the grassy areas that any pet would be exposed to. Um, typical pet deposits range anywhere between three and $500 per pet. And then you also need to determine um, if your pet deposit is going to be refundable or non-refundable. Uh, we typically suggest a fully refundable deposit. Uh, this provides your tenant with incentive to take good care of the property knowing that they have the opportunity to receive their full refund back at the end of the term. If your tenant knows that they're not going to get their money back regardless, um, there's no incentive for them to minimize or eliminate the pet damage that might occur. Um, next, you need to create and use a pet agreement in addition to your lease agreement. Um, if you can use your sp state-specific pet agreement, uh, that is what we would suggest. Being as specific as possible in your agreement is key to having a clear understanding of your expectations. And then finally, make sure to document the current condition of the property, both inside and out, prior to the new tenant moving in. Um, again, you'll want to take pictures of the entire property and focus on those areas that are at a higher risk for damage occurring um, as a result of the pet. Again, those items would be your doors, um, the door frame, the trim, molding, uh, carpet, and in your backyard, pay attention and take photos of the condition of the fence and the grassy areas, and try to notate if there's any holes that have been dug in the backyard or not. Um, by capturing the condition of the property prior to that tenant occupying, um, you'll be able to provide the necessary documentation and images if needed uh, to justify the deductions that you're taking from their pet deposit at the end of the term for any repairs that may need to be these guidelines for implementing a pet policy at your rental property, you can confidently rent your property to the millions of animal lovers out there looking for a place to call home. For more information on property management, please feel free to visit our website. Thank you so much for watching this video.